Hey everyone, welcome to my channel, it's Abrix here, and today I'm going to be showcasing my LEGO FN Scar L. So, let's get into the video. In this video, I really wanted to add a lot of history, or a little bit of history about the FN Scar L, and that's exactly what I did. And going through research, I found out that the original manufacturer and designer of this weapon is FN Harstel. That's probably why Scar, the Scar has FN in its name in the first place. The final design of the FN Scar L was in 2004, and by then it was mass produced. It originates from Belgium and was passed on to the US after. The Scar consists of two general variants, which would be the Scar H and the Scar L. As I have the model made out of Legos. I still think that the process of making this weapon is a lot more interesting than the actual research so let's talk about how i went through the process of making this weapon while i was making this weapon i found i've noticed that the scar both scar h and scar l don't really have a lot of detail they mostly have a uh, screw detailing and this weird rubber piece that would be on both sides of the weapon on both the scar h and scar l it also has rails on the sides but that's pretty much it it doesn't really have a lot of detail and i really wanted to add as much detail as the pictures provided that way it would not look as simple and not too blocky because it was kind of blocky while going through the process of making it which i really didn't like but the end result is really nice um i use of course the studs on the sides to resemble the screws that would the original weapon would have and for the rubber piece that I was explaining, I actually used this black Nexo Knight shield piece, which was really cool and a good use of that piece. Uh, I did use some of those jumper plates that you can see on there and that stud piece just to add the screw parts. And on the rail systems, I on the side rail systems, it actually I actually used those 2x2 two two jumper plates as well just to act as if those were the screws that would be on the rail systems. And speaking of the rails, I actually have, or this weapon actually has four. It has the default long one on the top there, and the bottom one, and the two ones that are on the side. Uh, the side ones, like I said, I added those jumper pieces. And I used jumper plates and those one by two tiles to make that rail smooth and that I actually use I actually use that design for both top rails and the both sides ones. The bottom ones I just use the normal one by two plates to make that. Now I'm gonna turn it around here so you can see the other side. This is the right side and you can see the first thing you notice is that bolt on the inside of the ejection port or the brass ejection port. Uh, you can see more of the studs on the sides. You can see that cheese slope right next to that ejection port. And that basically is the brass deflector. It's a little too small, but I still think it works. You can see the same design for that rubber piece that would be on the real model. On the other side, which is identical to the left side part. And you can see the other rail on this side, which that's really nice. Uh, you can see on the bottom receiver which would be this you can see the fire selector which this is ambidextrous so it would be on the both sides and this design is not mine this is actually Allen Customs Lego Guns design I believe so and you can see this 2x2 two two tile piece here and that basically is for the mag release which I'll show you in a second uh, one cool thing is the handle here it has a different angle I actually use those one by three slope pieces which I believe is the 30 angle slope and yeah that was really cool I actually had a hard time making that just because I've never used this angle for any of my handles but I still think it works out it has a really nice design to the actual handle I actually use those one by two texture pieces to make that like grip texture on the handle and I believe this is uh, kind of like the standard a AR-15, or yeah, the AR-15 handle. I just didn't add that like extra like grip piece that sticks out of the handle. Just because I found that it was a little bit uncomfortable. And that's why I left it out. But I still think the handle is very comfortable. It does withstand the weight of the weapon. 
the trigger, I have used this design before, and this is actually my design. Uh, I think other people have used it, but actually, um, I personally made this design by myself and with no help of any videos or any, like, designs out there. So I actually went through the process of making that. And I actually think that piece uh, really like fits with the trigger designs on other weapons or real models uh, you can see the trigger guard uh the magwell is pretty blocky i used a lot of one by x uh bricks to make that and you can see i added some detail with those cheese slopes going around the magwell just to add that like uh i don't know i really don't know why that was used for um if you guys can tell me down in the comments below um, that's basically what I did. You can see here I used those cheese slopes on the front and the sides. Uh, here's the magazine. And I'm going to show you guys the feature right now of the magazine release. Which is really cool. This is my own design. Uh, here's the magazine. You can see uh, right now it, would, it won't go down. But if you press the mag magazine release it will release the magazine. Here's the design of the magazine. You can see here that the magazine, once more, is two studs wide. And on the bottom of it, it has that slope, which is built upside down, while the actual whole thing is built sideways. But that is basically transitions into three, three studs. You can see that slope. You can see the pieces I used. I also used those tiles on the side of it. Just to add a little more detail, like I said, I really thought that the Scarl didn't have enough details. So you can see here, there's this hole for the actual mag release to latch on, which is really cool. And this is actually built upwards, like the uh, default uh, way the Lego should be built on, which is really cool. So it has a bunch of different like dimensions and different ways it was built, which is really cool. But you can see here, the actual magazine won't fit through unless you press the button and it will just latch on to that. Uh, gravity really can't like pull down the mag just because the magwell has a little bit of friction onto that. You can see here the handguard which was made with a lot of slopes as well as the top receiver which was made out of a lot of these 45 angled uh, slopes which was really cool. I really thought that I wouldn't have enough of those angled pieces for both sides but I did um, I basically used the slopes I got in the Lego haul that I got. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check the I'm Back video. I try to leave it in the description down below. But yeah, I really like that. I used a bunch of slopes, uh, these inverted slopes on the both stock and the handguard, which was really nice. Uh, it makes the handguard really nice to hold. I really like this weapon. It's quite a heavy weapon. You might notice that I keep like pushing down the weapon just because it's really heavy and it's uh, really hard to hold. Uh, here in the front, I did make the barrel, which was all smoothed out. Uh, I really made that slick with tiles. You can see that I did a standard like barrel design a lot of people use. I have the muzzle brake design there. And the front of the barrel has that technique piece to resemble a barrel hole. Uh, you can see here a lot of detail here, which would basically be the gas tube. You can see the gas tube is actually made out of cylinder pieces, which is really cool to make. You can see the front of that. Uh, the front sight, speaking of the actual front of the gun, uh, I really like how I made that design for the front sight. I really think it accomplishes the actual shape of the real model, which was really cool. I used some of those angled pieces right there and once again speaking of the sights here's the sights and this is the standard sight for the scar you can see there and the rear sight is actually folds you can see there it actually clicks into place which is really cool you can see that i actually use a two by two textured cylinder piece on that side on the right side and that's just because to add more grip for my right hand that would basically be the hand I would use to fold the sight. I can only use it for the left side just because I didn't have two of those. I only had one. But it still works out. I really like how those sights turned out. I really like that piece I used for the rear sight. And yeah, that's pretty much it for that. The next feature would be the charging handle on the bolt. And this feature is probably the most like 
best feature of this weapon that I did uh, just because the actual charging handle is actually separate from the bolt that's inside the weapon and I use that same design for my vector and also I'll try to leave that video if you guys want to see it and the reason for why it's separate is so that the bolt catcher could actually function and of course I added the bolt catch just because I got um, I really got into the habit of making the bolt catch so that's probably why so here's the charging handle and just listen closely you'll hear a click and the charging handle is supposed to go back but it just has a little bit of friction there so you can see there and if you if I press a bolt catch you'll hear a click that was the bolt going back into place I'll show you here so if I pull back the charging handle turn this around give me one second you can see that the shell ejection port is actually open now and I just broke it give me one second so I went back and fixed that and I actually removed the magazine so that way it would be more light but you can see that the shell ejection port there is actually open but if I press the bolt catch you'll see that it will go back into place you can see that that's one cool feature that I did um, one cool thing is that the charging handle design on the inside it actually opens up the gas tube part you can see there if I pull it back it'll open all three um, gas tube areas so that the gas will uh, go out and prevent a lot of heat uh, the heat amount you know getting bigger and making the weapon hot so that's what's really cool and the actual design of that was actually used uh just as mr ninja warrior uh the charging handle is actually built sideways if i could get light through him but it's actually built sideways it's his design so shout outs to him the bolt was actually built sideways that is my own design though um but yeah i really like how uh both the area of the actual reloading mechanism works uh the next thing i do want to talk about is the stock unfortunately i couldn't make the stock fold just because i couldn't find a way to make it fold uh one cool thing though is i did make this um cheek rest smooth it out with those two by two slow pieces which is, was really cool it also kind of adds a little bit of fragile area right there it just makes this area fragile the stock it is built sideways as you can see here uh, the butt stock is built with those 2x2 two two slopes as well. You can see the sling mount there, which this was really fun to make. I really liked the, how it ended out. Um, the, this is the default stock. So I'm going to turn it around here. This is actually retractable. Uh, just to replace the, the error of not making it fold. But you can see here's this area right here, which this would be sort of like a button. Uh, you basically pull this out. That would have to fall out, unfortunately. It's not like an actual button. Uh, but you can see here, if I pull out the stock, you can see the design of the stock, which is really cool. It makes it rounded. You can see the three positions that it would be. Uh, this would be the default position. The next one would be the middle position. And the last one, of course, is the longest position. But I really don't like putting it on the longest position. Just because of the cheek rest, it would fall off completely just because of gravity. But I'll show you guys the middle position, which that one does work uh, quite well. But like I said, the longest one just doesn't work with me and likes to break uh, easier than anything. So you can see here, here's the middle position. It kind of breaks a little too fast. It's kind of like wobbly, but it, that doesn't really matter. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this weapon, guys. Um, I really like how it turned out and if you guys want a tutorial I'll give it a week so you guys can tell me if you guys want a tutorial um, and if no one like really tells me not enough people tell me then I won't make a tutorial but that's pretty much it for this weapon everyone uh, I'll see you guys next time um, like as always try to liking and supporting my channel I really do appreciate it a lot um, I have been getting a lot of subscribers lately so I really hope this helps and as always I'm out